This is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News. This is the third part of an interview regarding the Greek debt crisis with Kostas Lapavitsas. Kostas is a professor of economics at the University of London. And in January 2015, he was elected as a member of the Greek parliament for the left-wing Syriza party. In that election, Syriza won and formed a government for the first time. But in August 2015, following the decision of Greece's prime minister, Alexis Tsipras, to ignore the results of an anti-austerity referendum, uh, Kostas Lapavitsas defected from Syriza to the newly formed Popular Unity Party. Thank you for joining us, Kostas. Thank you for the invitation. I know you're aware of it. Uh, is the left-leaning and widely respected uh, financial blog, Naked Capitalism, uh, which, uh, which has been very, very critical of the austerity program, and overall its editorial posture is sympathetic to the plight of the Greek people. But Eve Smith of Naked Capitalism has argued repeatedly uh, that the costs of the transition would exceed the benefits, both short and long term. And in particular, she's pointed uh, to the IT challenges involved of transitioning from the euro to the drachma. She's pointed out that the transition from the drachma to the euro was itself a multi-year process uh, that happened with intensive planning and that this return to or transition to another currency would be happening in situation, in situation circumstances which are much more difficult than the transition to the euro occurred. And she's she questions uh, quite uh, assertively about whether the Greek government has the capacity to manage that transition in the manner that you uh, you suggest. How do you respond to that critique? Um, I have followed naked capitalism, uh, not systematically, but I have read um, uh, material from uh, that blog, which I have generally found very useful uh, and informative. Unfortunately, during the Eurozone, um, and in particular, on the Greek case, uh, this is not so. Um, to put it uh, bluntly, the naked capitalism doesn't get the Eurozone crisis and certainly doesn't get what needs doing in the case of Greece. Um, it doesn't get the Eurozone crisis because it systematically um, underplays the importance of competitiveness and divergence of competitiveness for the Eurozone crisis. Uh, and uh, he's a very confused uh, take on why Germany has emerged as the dominant trading partner, something to do apparently with German productivity and efficiency. It's got nothing to do with that. Um, there's no evidence that German productivity uh, growth has been strong. In fact, it's been weaker than um, most other countries in the, uh, in the, in, in the Eurozone uh, or several other countries in the Eurozone, certainly weaker than Greek productivity growth. Um, and there is no evidence that um, uh, German ascendancy uh, in the Eurozone has to do with the uh, capabilities and capacities of uh, German uh, industry, substantial as these, as these might be. The reason why Germany has emerged uh, as a tremendous exporter across the world is very simple. Wage suppression. Wage suppression for years. Um, wage freeze effectively in Germany for the for, for, for more than a decade in the 2000s, which has given it a tremendous um, competitive advantage in the Eurozone. And second, um, after that, uh, the low Euro. The, uh, the weakness of the Euro since 2010 has compounded um, the effect of um, on, on German competitiveness. Germany has emerged essentially as the most successful exporter in the world, fundamentally. It's a tremendous, it's a new mercantilism that has obtained in Germany. The domestic economy remains weak, uh, despite recent uh, developments, it remains weak. Um, Germany has emerged as a huge exporter across the world. It sucks in demand from across the world. It has tremendous services, uh, up to 8% of GDP. China is not a patch on Germany in, in, in this regard. Um, and that, I repeat, has to do with wage suppression in the first instance, and then the weak euro subsequently. This is it. If you go to Germany, you will see it immediately. This is not a country that is going forward because it's investing in new technologies and so on. Investing in what? You go to Berlin, there isn't a decent airport when you land in the, uh, in the city. Um, now, naked capitalism has got a very peculiar take on that. And if you start with this, if you start by thinking that um, competitiveness is a bad idea, and competitiveness that comes from low wages is a bad idea, then you go wrong when it comes to 
proposing policies to, 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 to deal with the problem. And the policies proposed, as far as I understand them, uh, or at least advocated, been in the line of, um, let's stay in, but somehow not apply austerity. It's impossible. That's, this was tried. This was the lesson of the Syriza government. This was the lesson of the Varoufakis period, which was a completely chaotic period. No, people didn't know which way, I mean, didn't know what was happening during that period. This was a this was a failed experiment. That's the lesson the left must draw immediately. It, you cannot stay in the eurozone and apply different policies. This is impossible, and you can't do it for a very simple reason. Liquidity, in the end of the day, is controlled by Mario Draghi, who is the uh, the man who runs the European Central Bank. Mario Draghi will asphyxiate any country that attempts to follow a path that is not consistent with what the um, European Monetary Union wants the country to do. It's as simple as that. That's what did for Syriza. Therefore, in that context, if you want left-wing policy, poli policies, if you want the, the kind of policies that I outlined just before for growth and so on, you must consider exiting. The short-term costs must be managed in the best possible way to minimize um, the transition uh, difficulties. They are not as severe as make out as people make out. I agree with it, with the view that says that um, the the payment systems of the banks, which rely on IT and so on, uh, are a difficult problem. They are a difficult problem, and they will take time to sort out, uh, to to disentangle the computer systems of um, the domestic banks uh, from the European system in which they've uh, integrated themselves. Disentangle it from that because they would be using a different. Uh, unit of account, uh, a new, a new um, currency. It won't, it won't be easy, I know that. Um, but creating uh, banknotes and so on, that's straightforward. Uh, let's not exaggerate, however, the uh, transition costs, because there have been many instances in which countries have changed money, even recently, and the transition costs were non-existent or very, very, very small, certainly the political sphere. India is a good example here, if you allow me. Uh, the Indian government, as you know, uh, recently withdrew uh, unilaterally all large uh, denomination banknotes from circulation. It was a mad thing to do. Uh, they did it presumably to uh, attack um, tax avoidance. Uh, but it was a mad thing to do. It was done without any planning uh, and without any serious preparation. They did it. They did it, uh, and they presented it as a um, as a serious uh, attack on corruption in, in, in India. I don't want to go into that, and I don't want to discuss the ins and outs of it. Uh, it's a disaster, as I say, in, in terms of uh, a bad thing to do in terms of economics. What struck me though more than anything in this case, is that the Indian people took it in their stride. This is the, this is the remarkable thing. They took it in their stride. They took the shoe leather costs, because that's what it is effectively, of changing money, of having this money withdrawn from circulation, in their stride. Nothing happened. No riots, nothing. And in fact, it seems as if the government politically uh, and electorally might benefit from it. What does this tell you? It tells you that the short-term costs of exiting the uh, Eurozone, if they are done by a government that has got political support, uh, can be handled without political losses, uh, or at least without serious political losses. All that talk about Greece descending into anarchy, uh, people fighting in the streets, uh, war breaking out, and all this is wildly exaggerated. What it takes and what it would take uh, would be a determined government with genuine popular support in an open debate with its people. If the people understand what's at issue, um, they will support it, and Greece can go down a different path. And that will be a lesson for the rest of the Eurozone. Well, I hope, I hope that that debate does occur. It does appear that it's going to unfold, and I'm sure you'll be an important part of it. And as it unfolds, uh, I hope we can have you back, Hostess, to talk about uh, the, the road ahead for Greece and whether that would include an exit from the Eurozone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I thank you.
And this is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News.